Elizabeth Claiborne is an emergency physician and an adjunct assistant professor of emergency medicine at the University of Maryland's uh, Prince George's Hospital Center. Uh, good to see you, doctor. Thank you for having me. So what's the status of the cases in the state of Maryland and the surrounding D.C. area? So Maryland is definitely seeing an increased uh, number of COVID positive patients. Um, some models are saying that we're right in the middle of our peak, but there's some discrepancy on that. I know that um, specifically for me and my hospital, we have seen an increased number of acutely ill people, and um, we're seeing a lot of people arriving in respiratory distress. So we're bracing to continue to see an increased number in the coming days. Mm -hmm. And you wrote a piece for USA Today, and you talked about how you never worked in such a heartbreaking and traumatic environment as the coronavirus pandemic. You know, tell us about what you and your colleagues are experiencing, and and we certainly have been you know doing as much you know, reporting as we can, particularly on the disparities, you know, of health care. Prince George's County is predominantly black. So a, a good number of the people that you are treating are, are black Americans disproportionately affected by coronavirus. So um, what what are you experiencing firsthand? Yeah, absolutely. Even before this pandemic hit, we already mm -hmm. served a population that had a lot of comorbidities or underlying diseases and, you know, had a lot of issues and we were already a very busy ED. So the pandemic certainly has compounded the factors of those underlying health disparities and our population is being very hard hit. Um, I do see now that the stress, not just among the providers, the people trying to provide care, but the patients and the families is at an all time high and people are very scared and anxious. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think a lot of people don't know what to do. And so I always get asked as an emergency provider, what can I do, Dr. Claiborne, to help you? Um, how can I make a difference? And I think besides listening to your health officials, making sure that you're following you know, instructions to stay home, stay safe, um, and those type of things. Another thing I always emphasize that people can do is to plan ahead. And what I mean by that is have an advanced care plan. Um, too often when I'm in the ER, I see people arrive in a, acute illness, can maybe not speak for themselves and mm -hmm. hadn't taken the time to talk to their family about what their wishes would be. And that puts mm -hmm. the family members um, or the patient in just a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. And then as a provider, I have to make a decision in minutes that it might dictate whether this person lives or dies or what happens to them. And it's a lot easier mm -hmm. to do that if that had been thought about ahead of time and documented. And so you can go to cdc.gov to get state specific forms for advanced directives or use an online platform like mydirectives.com, which I find to be very helpful to keep everybody on the same page. So, so that's your advice now. People are very much aware, but so many were just, you know, caught by surprise, caught off guard by this. And, you know, how, I mean, there have been so many stories. I've read about many of them in the Washington, D.C. area. It's, it's, you know, Maryland is my home state. So I've read a lot about, you know, personal stories of people who were just within a week, you know, leave, losing their loved ones uh, to this disease and, and not knowing, you know, really what hit them. So, but now that people are a little bit more, you know, acutely aware, where you're saying, you know, it should be a discussion that every family is having right now. You know, what, right. what, what is our plan? What, what happens if someone gets sick? You know, what, where there are the responsibilities within our family? Who's going to make the decisions? Boy, that's a tough conversation for families to have. But you say, you know, you've got to do it right now. Absolutely. And it, it's no matter what age, it's actually for younger people that this ends up being more difficult. Um, you might have seen in some of the pieces, I actually am seven months pregnant. I'm mm -hmm. practicing as a pregnant provider. Mm -hmm. It puts me at increased risk. And so I had to have a conversation with my husband about if I get sick, this is what I think is important in my life. This is what I would want done. This is what I would want done to protect my baby. Mm -hmm. And those are difficult conversations to have, but especially as an emergency provider, I feel like it's important to lead by example. And so I've had those conversations, I've documented them, I've shared them with my family, my medical providers, and you know, it's better to be prepared because you just mm -hmm. don't wanna be caught off guard because as you said, Fred, you can get sick mm -hmm. very quick and then you may not have the capacity to make a decision for yourself. That you're seven months pregnant, you have great reason to just step back and say, I'm going to approach medicine differently, but you are still choosing to be right out there. What, what is keeping you from saying, right now, I, I wanna be on the sidelines? 
Uh, it's definitely a decision I weigh every day. Um, what I do is not without risk. Um, every time I cross the threshold of the hospital, I'm putting myself at risk and my family at risk, as all frontline providers do. Um, I'm in a bit of a unique situation because there are two other pregnant ER doctors in my group. And so the three of us got together and decided we were going to stay as long as we felt we could adequately protect ourselves. And so that decision gets weighed every day. And as we get more busy and we see an influx of uh, critically ill patients, I might have to stop. I might have decide that I want to serve, you know, in a capacity that doesn't mean clinically working because I don't want mm. to become ill. I don't want to put my baby at risk. I don't want to go from being someone who helps the healthcare system to becoming a strain. Uh, and so it's a difficult decision. And mm -hmm. I, I just take it a day at a time right now. Mm. Well, we are wishing you well, Dr. Elizabeth Claiborne. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, be well, be safe. You, baby, husband, whole family. I appreciate it, Brent. Thank you. <laughs> All right.